defining acids and bases on a molecular level, there's, there's different ways to define them. The Arrhenius definition, named after the Swedish scientist Arrhenius, is that an acid produces hydrogen ions in aqueous solution. So HCl, um, hydrogen chloride, is actually a covalent compound because hydrogen is a nonmetal. It does not contain ions, but when we put HCl into water, it ionizes and forms hydrogen ions. So when we put this molecular compound into water, it forms ions. One of them is hydrogen ion, and so this is defined as an Arrhenius acid. Hydrogen ions are highly reactive. What exactly is a hydrogen ion? How many, let's think about a hydrogen atom. How many protons does a hydrogen atom have? It has one, right? And how many electrons does it have? One. So if a hydrogen atom loses one electron to become a hydrogen ion, what is it? What's left? Just a proton. So a hydrogen ion really is just a proton. That proton is very, very reactive. I think of hydrogen ions as being um, a little bit like small, very small children, maybe even babies, and you don't see them out by themselves. Do you see three-month-old babies crossing McKinley over here? No, they can't even walk, right? They're, where do you see babies? You see babies being held by grown-ups or pushed in carriages, right? Hydrogen ions are not found by themselves in solution. They attach, they bond to a water molecule and get carried around with the water molecule, just like a baby bonds with an adult and that adult takes care of them, right? So here's this hydrogen ion. It's going to form a covalent bond with a water molecule and form this ion, H3O+, and this has a special name. It's called the hydronium ion. H3O plus. So anytime we have hydrogen ions in water, they are always riding piggyback on a water molecule. They're never found by themselves. Well, it gets a little tedious sometimes writing H3O plus all the time, and so we often use H plus aqueous and H3O plus aqueous interchangeably to refer to the hydronium ion. When we see H plus aqueous, we recognize it's in water, though that hydrogen ion, that bare proton, is going to be riding on a water molecule and it's not really by itself. And it can get a little confusing and I'm sorry for that, but I can only simplify the world so much, unfortunately. When we write the molecular formula for an acid, we usually write the ionizable hydrogen first. Um, so this is formic acid. Here is the uh, structure of formic acid. We've got a carbon here with a double bond to the oxygen and a single bond to this oxygen. That oxygen is bonded to this hydrogen. This other hydrogen is bonded to this carbon. Now this molecule has two hydrogen atoms in it, and it's an acid. But when you put it in water, only one of those hydrogen atoms comes off as a hydrogen ion and it's this one over here. So when we write the formula, we put the ionizable hydrogen first, and the other hydrogens, if there are any, come later. And there's another acid that we've seen like that, and that was acetic acid, HC2H3O2. And when we put that in water, we get hydrogen ions and acetate ions. I know it's been a little confusing. Why do we put this hydrogen by itself? Because that's the ionizable hydrogen. That's the hydrogen that becomes an ion in solution. This is a structural formula. It shows how the atoms are bonded together. And this is a molecular formula that just shows how many of each. But by convention, we write the ionizable hydrogen first, even in the molecular formula. Bases are defined as substances that produce hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. So sodium hydroxide, a soluble ionic compound, 
When it dissolves in water, it separates into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. It forms hydroxide ions, and so it is an Arrhenius base. There are many compounds, though, that contain what look to be a hydroxide group, an OH, methanol, CH3OH. But this is not a base. When you put this in water, it does not ionize and form hydroxide ions. So we're mostly looking at soluble, soluble ionic compounds. So things like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, generally a metal and a hydroxide ion. Not always, there are exceptions. So acids dissolve and form hydrogen ions, bases dissolve and form hydroxide ions, and when a hydroxide ion, I'm sorry, a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion get together, they form a water molecule. And this is the neutralization process between acids and bases that we've talked about. The Arrhenius definition is very nice, but it doesn't explain everything. It doesn't explain how some substances like ammonia can act as bases even though they don't have OH- in them. And it's also important to understand the Arrhenius definition does not apply to non-aqueous solvents, and so that, that limits its usefulness as well. The Bronsted-Lowry definition goes a little farther. It defines an acid as a proton donor a substance that donates a proton. So proton, that's a hydrogen ion. So the Bronsted-Lowry definition does not contradict the Arrhenius definition. An acid will form hydrogen ions in solution. It, it will donate protons. It will donate those protons to water molecules. Bases are proton acceptors. And so this definition of base is going to apply to a much wider range. And it focuses on the transfer of hydrogen ions in an acid-base reaction. One thing is the acid, the other is the base. And so this is like you go to Disneyland with the baby and you want to ride Space Mountain. And they don't allow three-month-old babies on Space Mountain. So you're holding the baby and you say, hey, hey, hubby, here, you hold the baby, I'm going on the ride. You transfer the baby from yourself to someone else. Or maybe you brought along a, a helper so that you could go on the ride together, and so you hand the baby off to the babysitter. The base is the babysitter for the hydrogen ion. If someone transfers or donates a hydrogen ion, something else has to accept it. So that's what the Bronsted-Lowry acid base definition is, is referring to. And we see that HCl, which we looked at earlier, is a Bronsted-Lowry acid because when we put it in water, it donates its proton to the water molecule. And we end up with a hydronium ion and a chloride ion. In this situation, who is accepting the hydrogen ion? the water, right? The water is the proton acceptor. So the water molecule is acting as the base, the babysitter for that hydrogen ion. So we know that ammonia acts as a base, but it doesn't fit the Arrhenius definition. Here's the formula for ammonia, NH3. When you put ammonia in water, it accepts a proton from the water and becomes ammonium ion and produces hydroxide ion in solution. And now we can understand how ammonia can act as a base even though it doesn't have OH in its formula. It has no oxygen in it at all. We always have the acids and the bases um, donating and accepting in concert. 
And so we have the hydrochloric acid donating the proton to the water molecule. It's accepting the proton. This is the acid. This is the base. In this situation, we have NH3 is accepting a hydrogen ion from the water. It's the base. And the water molecule is donating the proton to the ammonia molecule. So water can act as an acid or as a base. And so we have a special term for that, amphoteric. Where do amphibians live? Can they live in the water? Yes. Can they live on land? Yes. They can go both, right? Amphi or ampho relates to being dual in nature. And so amphoteric substances can act as acids or as bases, depending on the situation. Let's go back to this one. So here we have ammonia mixing with water, and we get ammonium, sorry, sorry to say that wrong, ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. You see this double-headed arrow here? That's an equilibrium, isn't it? What if we draw it the other way? What if we draw it with ammonium ion and hydroxide ion as the reactants and ammonia and water as the products? Now the ammonium ion is donating a proton to the hydroxide ion, which is accepting it. So the NH4 plus becomes NH3 by donating a hydrogen ion. The hydroxide ion becomes water by accepting. Acids accept. I'm sorry, acids donor. <laughs> mm, start over. Acids donate and bases accept. The base is the babysitter. He accepts the baby. So this version, these, these two guys are related to each other. Well, maybe I should make that red. So here it's an acid. Over here it's a base. It can go back and forth and back and forth. And the same with the hydroxide ion and the water molecule. These are called conjugate acid-base pairs. They are two substances that differ only by a proton. Look at the formulas. What's different? The N is the same. This has four hydrogens and a positive charge. This has three hydrogens and no charge. The difference between these is a hydrogen ion. Here it's holding the hydrogen ion, and here it isn't. And hydroxide and water are also a conjugate acid-base pair. The OH- is the base. It can accept a proton. And the water is an acid. It can donate a proton. Any two substances related to each other by the transfer of a proton are considered an acid, conjugate acid-base pair. And one of the things we need to be able to do is to recognize those. So here, ammonia, when it accepts a proton, it becomes the conjugate acid. Water, as an acid, donates a proton and becomes a conjugate base. So the difference between these two is only a hydrogen ion, and the difference between these two is a hydrogen ion. So in each of these reactions, identify the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. So let's look at this one. C5, H5N, and H2O. We need to look at what this one starts out as and what happens to it over here. How did it get to be this from what it started out as? It accepted a hydrogen ion, right? So this molecule accepted a hydrogen ion. Does that make it an acid or a base? Makes it a base. It's the babysitter. It will accept 
the hydrogen ion. Where did the hydrogen ion come from? It came from the H2O. H2O is what it started as, and it went to OH minus. It became that way by losing a hydrogen. It donated a hydrogen ion. So that's the acid. If this is the base, then it's corresponding substance over here has to be the conjugate acid. So I'm going to call that CA, conjugate acid. And then the OH minus must be the conjugate base. Any questions? It's usually not real clear at first what's going so on there. The, the conjugate would usually be on the product side, yes. Let's look at equation B. Here we've got a substance HNO3, and that becomes one of these. Okay, it shouldn't be too hard to realize that it's, it becomes the NO3 minus. Right, because this doesn't have any nitrogens in it. So this one is becoming NO3 minus, and how does it do that? By losing a hydrogen ion, right? It donated a hydrogen ion to something else. What donates a hydrogen ion? An acid. So over here then, this is the conjugate base. <coughs> The water molecule accepted the hydrogen. It's acting as the babysitter. So it's babysitting that proton. And then this over here is the conjugate acid. So the H2O, where's my pointer? My pointer's gone. That's not right. Wi-Fi issues. Okay. The hydrogen ion accepted, uh, I'm sorry, the water molecule accepted a hydrogen ion. This H3O plus could donate a hydrogen ion to someone else, right? It could pass that baby off to somebody else or maybe give it back to the parent and regenerate the HNO3. So it's a back and forth. It's like, it's like hot potato or something. Who's got the baby? The person with the baby is the acid. The person who can accept the baby is the babysitter. Because you pass the baby off to the babysitter. 